Hello everyone and welcome to the 6th episode of the push for 2000 ELO on my chess.com rapid. We're facing Melee26 from Germany, rated 2165, who goes for the Sicilian defence. And again, we're going to play the A3 Sicilian. Now, we're hoping for knight c6 or e6, so that we can gambit a pawn with b4, and a bunch of lines stem from that. The most, I think the most common line that higher rated players like this guy tend to play is g6. And the point is that b4 is no longer viable because of bishop g7. And you take advantage of the fact that the b pawn has vacated the b2 square and you can target the rook early. My opponent goes d6, which means that b4, it doesn't really work, but we can just develop normally, and we can try and justify this a3 move by playing something like bishop to c4 and potentially tucking back onto a2. And also the a3 pawn controls b4, which might be useful later on to maybe prevent moves like b5 and b4. We're going to play bishop c4, this um, knight to e4, knight e4, and d5 trick doesn't work in this case because we can give a check on b5 after d5 is played. It's a common center fork idea, but here it doesn't work because c5 is on the board. My opponent goes e6, and his intention is clearly to play d5. I'm pretty tempted to play bishop to a2 so we can meet d5 with e5 which I think is exactly what I'm going to do here. Sorry about that, I just had to take a call and we've lost about two minutes, which is great. Opponent goes bishop e7, so okay, he's not going to try and play d5 yet. I think d3 is a reasonable move to open my bishop up. I want to try and delay developing my kingside knight because I think f4 is a move that I want to play and then put the knight on f3 probably. It looks pretty good to me. Okay, the knight, his, his knight might try and come into d4, which is a common idea. We could play knight to e2, preemptively preparing the move c3. But, so c3 in response to knight d4, right? Kicking the knight out. But if we go knight e2, then d5 is a bit of a problem because e5 is controlled by the knight, so we can't play it. So I'm going to go f4, so that if d5 is played, we can go e5. And after knight d4, we can continue with this plan of knight e2, c3 if we want. It's a very typical idea in these types of Sicilian positions, in both the Grand Prix and the a3 Sicilian, because this is quite similar to a Grand Prix structure. Um, because obviously we've got the pawns on f4 and e4. I'm not sure whether the pawn normally goes to d4 in the Grand Prix, though. I actually don't know, <laughs> in all honesty. But knight f3 can't be a bad move. I'm probably going to castle, maybe go king h1, play a move like knight e2, c3. You do have to watch out for moves like c4 in those types of structures with c3 being played to try and undermine the e4 pawn. So that is something to watch out for. And I know because I've been a victim of it a few times. I'm expecting my opponent to probably go knight d4. And then I'll probably meet it with knight to e2. Again, going for that idea. I could play knight e2 here. Uh, c4 isn't playable because my bishop controls that square as well. If he goes b5, then c4 will be more of an idea. And if I go knight e2, I probably want to put the knight on g3 to protect e4. So if like knight e2, b5, knight g3. And we also then control f5, so that's more of an idea in the future. So I'm going to go knight e2. I don't think it can be bad, necessarily. Um, it might not be perfect, but I think it's an easy plan. Like, it can be really difficult in these types of middle games where the center is really closed and it's not obvious, like, where the weaknesses are in either position. If I can come up with a plan, even if it's not the best plan, I should probably just go for it. And that's advice that I would give to a lot of you watching, really, because you're not necessarily going to find the best plan, but a plan is better than no plan, unless your plan is to, like, lose all your pieces, but, you know, let's not be stupid. Obviously, that's, like, out of the realm of actual possibility. King h1 can always be a useful move here, 
just to get off of this diagonal. But since our opponent has already played queen to c7, going for queen b6 to open like this uh, check up with c4 would probably just waste a move. Yeah, so, okay. b5 is probably intended to play c4 in response to c3 to undermine e4. So I'm going to go knight to g3 first. And then we've, we've made a lot of moves with this knight, but in the Grand Prix, from my understanding, one of the main ideas is for white to try and make a move like f5 work. And f5 could also try and open up our light squared bishop and go after the f7 pawn. So transferring this knight from the queen side to the king side could be really useful to go for a king side attack. It's also more difficult for my opponent to play bishop b7, which would be quite an active diagonal because that takes the bishop's eyes off of f5 and makes f5 a lot more playable. If, if we do go f5 at some point, he could go for e5, but that would also make it a lot more difficult for him to play d5 at any point because the e6 pawn would no longer be helping and our bishop would be like completely dominant over this diagonal. I am quickly going to refresh the page because it's just being really slow for some reason and chess.com keeps on doing this. I don't know why, it's really annoying, but... I mean, at least it's a good chess platform, right? <laughs> like, I can't complain too much. Okay, yeah, bishop. he does go bishop b7. That's surprising. That is really surprising. Uh, okay, okay, what if I go f5? I assume he has to push. If um, f5 takes takes, that looks horrific. That looks pretty bad. So f5, e5. c3. And maybe c4 is the idea. But that would just lose a pawn. Queen e2 is a move I would like to play to add extra defense to the c4 square. But I think f5 here is pretty strong. I am aware this bishop could be targeting this pawn if the knight moves, which might be the idea to make the c4 undermining a bit better because we currently have a defender and he could have two attackers if this knight moves. But if, but it's not an obvious square for this knight to go to. Especially if c4 is played, d4 will be undefended. So I'm going to go f5. I think, I think it can't be bad. Because we're forcing black to respond. Either he pushes, and then it's just our move again, and we can figure out how to respond to my opponent's idea of c4. Possibly with a move like queen e2. Possibly with a move like c3. Or if he takes, and then knight takes, that just looks incredibly good. Okay, yeah, so he pushes. And now our bishop is fantastic. And moves like knight g5 in the future could be an idea to target f7, but not right now, because the rook's doing a fine job. Um, c3 can't be a bad move. Queen e2 looks good. King h1 is probably unnecessary right now, but it's always a move that we could play. Um, his knight can't even access f4, because our knight controls h5. So that's pretty useful. I feel like this knight isn't doing very much on f3. But if I put it to a square like g5, then he's just going to go h6. So I don't really want to do that. Hmm. If h6 is played at some point, then knight h4 into g6 with the pin on the pawn could be an idea. But there's a lot of factors h4 as well isn't a bad idea to try and go h5 h6 and if we maybe induce a move like h6 or h5 well if we induce h5 then we can put the knight on g5 if he goes for a move like h6 maybe we can go h5 and like knight h4 ideas Hmm, h4 wouldn't be stupid. c4... It's kind of annoying. Maybe I want to go queen e2. 
just to con just to add more defense to e4. Maybe bishop to g5 is also good. But if h6, maybe bishop h4, then the knight could v go via d4 to a square like e3 to cause some problems. Hmm, interesting position. I feel like we're better, but we need to find like a way through. Queen e2 looks good. Rook e1 could also be good. Rook e1 just defending e4, but it feels somehow wrong to take the rook off the f file because we could try and lift it in the future. Hmm. C3 or Queen e2 are the moves I'm kind of between right now. If Queen e2, Knight d4, I don't know if I like takes takes. So maybe c3 just stopping knight d4. If c3, c4, take, take, take. Knight a5. We always have bishop d3 to add defense to e4. So let's go c3. Let's go c3. And if he tries to sack the knight in some way, then we could always desperado the bishop on f7 before we take the knight to get a pawn back, like an, another pawn. So I don't think that's a problem. It's an interesting position. It's like the center is very closed and the move d5 is becoming harder for black to play with every move really, especially after playing e5. So c4 seems to be his main idea, but if we can make that incredibly hard for him to pull off, then I think black could be in for a hard game, which is obviously what we want to do. Okay, rook d8. Can't be bad. Maybe he will try and play d5. Maybe that's what he wants to do. He can't really add another defender to this square. I don't really want to go c4 because it blocks our bishop and we give away the d4 square. So maybe h4, but if d5, I don't want to take it. So if queen e2 maybe, d5, if takes, takes, mm. we could consider bishop to g5. So if d5, we can take the knight and then take d5. If bishop g5, h6, maybe we can take. Bishop g5, knight g4. Take. Then knight takes, and then he's definitely making d5 happen. Although then we can try f6. Then we can go f6 and free up the f square, f5 square for the knight. So I think this is a principled move. If we have to give the bishop up for the knight, it's not the end of the world. Because it is also kind of a closed position. This bishop isn't doing that much anyway. And we take, if we can take the knight, then we get rid of a defender of d5. Of course, it's not going to be that difficult for black to make d5 happen. But we can make it harder. Because if he ends up having to move this knight, like, to facilitate the bishop's defense of d5, then the knight will take its eyes off of e5. So a move like queen to e2 after d5 takes, and something like, okay, let's say like a bishop takes, then e5 could be under significant threat if this knight no longer defends e5. So it'll be like a 2v1 situation. So that's worth considering. And like I said, if I can make f6 happen, even if I have to give up a pawn to get the knight to f5, that could be pretty deadly. Because the knight would be in, um, absolutely amazing <laughs> on that square. Um, especially since this bishop is on b7 rather than c8 where it can take it. So, very interesting position. Um, and if these both of these knights move, then we can also try lifting the rook potentially. Moves like queen e2 and rook d1 or rook e1 are always going to be good moves. b4 is potentially something that black could try. But he's not actually threatening anything. 
Because if we like take, 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 and take, then okay, great for black, but we don't have to do that. If b4 is played, we can just ignore it. And if he takes either of our pawn, we just take back. And it might not be that comfortable, but it's not the end of the world at all. It's not that bad. So. I think bishop g5 makes a lot of sense. We're, of course, developing our final minor piece as well. So that can never be a bad move. Also, if any of you are wondering, after knight g4, bishop e7, knight e3 doesn't work, I don't think, because of bishop d8. You can't take the queen because I'll take your queen. So if you take back something like queen e2, knight f1, rook f1. And I think that's good for us. Knight b8. Wow. So he's opening his bishop's def like defense of uh, d5 up. But I think queen e2, like I was saying before. And then if d5, we can just take. And then we can take on e5. d3 may hang. But he can't take with the rook. Hmm. Let's see. Queen e2, d5. I can't take the knight first, because then he'll add an extra defender to e5. So queen e2, d5 takes. Oh, it's fine, because we can just take with a knight rather than the queen. And then d3 is defended. So yeah, let's go queen e2. We also just get off of the same file as the rook, which just prevents tactics from happening in the future, which, of course, is a good thing, uh, theoretically. Oh, not, not theoretically. Um, just from, like, a... Uh, I can't think of the word. A pr like, like, like a principled stance. Like, principally, it will be a good thing. So that even if I can't calculate an actual way that that happens, is we, we, we just never have to worry about it again. At least, not for now. So, okay, I think we're still stopping the move d5. And queen e2 is always good. Stepping off of the file of the rook, adding defense to e4 in case of a move like c4, which isn't off the cards because knight c8 also opens up the queen's defense of the c4 square. But queen e2 not only helps defend e4, not only attacks e5 if d5 is played, also, well, d3 was defended anyway, but also adds more support to the c4 square. Queen e2 is a move that I've wanted to play for a while in this game, but I think now is probably the time to have played it because it is also integral in targeting pawns on the e file so okay yeah h4 h5 h6 could still be an idea because if h4 h6 we could maybe just take and then play something like knight to h5 to target the bishop and if he moves the bishop then f6 Okay, the knight comes to d7, just protecting e5 and f6. But his rook no longer defends the d5 square. Worth noting. We could consider playing d4 ourselves. Although we could face problems with this diagonal. Like something like this. Oh my god, I can't draw arrows. Queen b7. Sorry, queen b6 even. That's kind of annoying. Um, What is black's idea? I think black's idea is b5. Because e5 is well protected. So rookie 1 would add extra attack to e5. So if d5 takes... Let's say bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes, bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes. You can't take on d3 because your knight hangs. <laughs> I think that works. There is a case to be made for moving the f rook to e1. There definitely is. Because I guess the focus is shifting away from the king side and more towards the center. And that means that this rook still defends this bishop, but we can also move it to a square like d1. Or maybe c1 if we want to get adventurous. So I'm actually going to move the f rook. I don't know whether that's correct. They're like the correct rook to move. But it makes sense to me. Because in a lot of positions, 
if we achieve f6, like, black controls the f6 square so many times that the idea probably wouldn't be to win the pawn back, but just to put a knight on f5 as, like, a clearance sacrifice. Okay, h6 is played. Now we have a... Well, we don't actually have a choice to make, because we could just retreat to h4, because g5 isn't playable because of en passant, and also the pawn can't take back because of the pin. So we don't have to take, we can just retreat. If something like bishop h4, knight e4 doesn't work because the bishop is undefended. So that's fine. And also, even if it wasn't undefended, we'd be attacking both of his rooks. So I don't think it would work anyway. But it's worth, like, pointing out. Although, actually, our knight defends the bishop, so... He would only have one attacker, so it wouldn't be a problem anyway. But, you know, you want to have these kinds of things in mind, because you don't want to get, again, tactics, like, randomly come up against you, and you're like, whoa, I didn't even consider that. I didn't even realize the bishop was vulnerable uh, to some kind of discovery with the knight moving. And although we now established nothing like that works in this position, good to have an eye on. I'm just thinking maybe I should have put the bishop on a different square, like, I don't know, d2 to put the knight on h4 to get into g6. But it doesn't even work because he can just move his king and then the pawn is no longer pinned. Yeah, that doesn't work anyway. But again, this shows the power of the pawn on f5 actually because it means that g5 can't be played and we're taking away some crucial squares. Again, d5, take, 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 take. You can't take because of takes. Because the knight will be on e7. So we would just end up a pawn up in that position. And we'd also have an incredibly strong bishop. So we'd be chilling. We'd be chilling. Again, we don't want to let our opponent play d5. c4 also can't be played because it takes, takes, takes. And the queen maintains the defense of both e4 and c4. So again, we're all good if that happens. Again, if b4... All b4 really does is make it more difficult for black to play c4. b4, we can just ignore him. I mean, we could, like, win a pawn. But I don't see the point. Knight goes to b6. Makes a lot of sense. If d5 is played now, take. Well, then we just have way too much attack on e5. And the bishop would potentially be hanging behind um, the knight if the knight ends up on e5. So that's not really your concern. If c4 is... I think I should probably play rook d1, because if c4 is the idea... We can maybe take and have the rook help out in defending d5. You can also consider the move knight d2, just to add more defense to c4, and also help defend e4, because this knight no longer defends e5, so we have sufficient attack. Worth considering. Hmm, very interesting position. <sighs> very interesting. We could play d4, but I don't think it's good. I think rook d1. I'm not sure what to play, and I'm kind of low on time. So rook d1 is never going to be bad. One of my issues with my position currently is my knight on g3 because if we can get this pawn to move and get the knight on f5 then great but we can't get the pawn to move currently although the knight is defending e4 so that is quite useful it does go c4 well we don't have to take it and we don't have to push we can just leave the tension because i want him to take me to reopen my bishop up d5 again is not a move because we just take and e5 is a problem. So I think I'm just going to play king h1.
Yeah, I'm just going to play king h1. And just be patient. Because I feel like we have a good amount of pressure here. But I just can't find the way in to the position. The way to actually tear apart the black position. So we can just play improving moves. We could also consider going d4. And dropping the bishop back to b1. He takes. Okay, that's surprising. Maybe he wants to put a knight on c4. Potentially. We could take with the queen. We could take with the rook. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one I should take with. Queen takes d5. We're in line with his rook there. So, no, I don't want to do that. If rook d3, knight c4. I mean, it's a very nice knight. It's a very nice knight. But maybe we can just go like rook d1. And we have a good amount of attack. And d5 is still not playable because of e5. Let's take with the rook. Again, I don't know if this was the best course of action necessarily, but I don't think it can be particularly bad. I think we're okay. The knight does defend e5, but we can always just snap it off the board. That is a common theme in this position, just being able to snap knights off with bishops if we want. b3 might be playable. Because if knight a3, queen b2... You can't defend the knight if queen c5, just b4. But if b3, the knight can just retreat and then our pawns look a bit silly. So let's not do that. Let's just go rook d1. Just try and regroup. Because the rook is a bit, a bit weird on the d3 square, blocking the queen's scope. I don't really want to do that. And here, maybe we are trying to take Maybe. But again, we don't have to make a decision yet. We could always drop the bishop back to b1 to help out in this. d5, I suppose, could be playable. Because I was thinking maybe the queen could get overloaded. But again, we can always snap this knight off the board. Although if d5 bishop takes, he could take like this. So that the e file doesn't open. But if d5, I assume we take first. And if something like rook takes, then we just take here. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So again, we're making sure d5 can't be played. But we are low on time. And our opponent is very high rated. So there is a good chance that I could mess something up if I'm not careful. a4 is a good idea to try and undermine the b5 pawn. But it is currently defended. So if like a4 takes takes, black is fine. Black is fine in that position. Hmm. I don't know where the way in is. I'm not sure what the plan should be in this position. It feels like black has the only plan. Maybe since we have a majority on the queen side, I should be trying to push. But after a4, ab5, ab5, I don't know what. I'm supposed to do from there. It's not obvious to me. Hmm. Knight D two, Knight B two. Is annoying. Okay, I think I have an idea. I don't know if it's a good idea, but I have an idea. My idea is to take the knight off the board, put my queen on e3. Well, not yet, but that's why I'm taking the knight off the board. My plan. Well, I'm hoping he takes with the pawn. And 
that hope is also a bit of a calculation because I don't think he's going to want to trade queens. But even if he takes with the queen, we can still play queen e Oh no, not queen, queen e3 yet. We should take the knight first. Yeah, he takes with the pawn. So I'm going to take on f6. I know I'm training off both of my bishops. I'm going to go knight h5 to target this bishop, and I'm hoping he retreats. He might defend it, but then he loses c4. So I'm hoping he retreats. And then I'm going to play, I think, queen e3 to target h6. And the idea is to play f6 to try and overload the g7 pawn. It's a long-winded plan, but it may work. It may work. If um, bishop b7, I could also try moving this knight to go queen g4 to try and make something happen on g7. And if something like bishop f8, then knight f6 would win a rook. If bishop b7, I just don't know where to move this knight though. Maybe we can move to d2. Wow, okay, so he wants to break in the center. Interesting. He doesn't move the bishop, so we could just take him. We could just take. That is a bold move. That is a very bold move. I think we need to. We have to take that. Do we take this pawn? I don't know. Knight d2 is worth considering. Queen e3 is a direct threat. But then we run out of firepower. I'm going to go knight d2 because I want to go something like queen h5, rook e3. The knight's also defending e4 and also attacking c4 if this pawn moves. If the pawn takes on e4, I think we should take back with the knight because we kind of force him to trade his bishop off because our knight is very strong. I mean, he doesn't have to, but I think he probably should. I mean, I guess he could maybe, like, take and go queen c6. But then, like, I don't know. Uh, no, queen g4 might not be that good. Oh, but also with queen c6, we could trade rooks and play queen h5 to double attack. Okay, king h7. So he's not going to make the first real play. Hmm. It's really not obvious how I make progress here. It really isn't. So I think I should just put the knight on e4. Because now f6, you know, it's still a target. Something like takes, 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 takes. It's probably a draw, but we are low on time. However, there is a 10 second increment. C4 is also weak. F7 is weak. F6 is weak. A6 is potentially weak, but it's also a bit out of the way. I mean, this looks good. I want to play a move like H3 as well to give my king some breathing room. Rook D8 is what I'm expecting. Yep. That's a good move. I think Rook D5 might be pretty strong. Rook d5, queen c6. Yeah, no, that's an issue. I'm just going to take. I'm going to go h3. And I think this should probably be a draw because black is quite active with his queen. He controls the only open file. But our king is going to be pretty safe on h2 and black has a ton of weaknesses. He does have a passed e-pawn, and b2 is vulnerable, but 
Someone like Queen D1, King H2, there's no obvious follow up. If something like Queen D2, then we just take on C4 and Black has problems. Because if we can get our Queen to F7, Black is in trouble. Okay. Here, here, here. Well, no, then he just takes. No, we can't take that. I mean, he can, but we just perpetual him. Yeah, I think f7 is the prize. And I don't think black can actually defend it. He may be able to get us in a perpetual check, but that's fine, because I think I'm happy with a draw here. Against a 2165 rated player, like, that is literally 200 elo points higher. So, you know, would we would take that. The only way black can defend f7 is something like king g7. Maybe that's a problem, though. Maybe that's a problem. I think I should take on a6. He's going to win the f5 pawn, but then we win c4. Okay, he pushes. I kind of missed that. Kind of missed that, and we might be losing. Mm, this looks horrible. I think we've lost. I don't. I don't know what to do. The pawn is just running, and I can't really stop it. I don't think I can perpetual him, because he always has some square to run off to. I was trying to get to g3. That's why I was initially looking at uh, king queen d6 to get there, but I realized that he blocks that. If e3, queen f3, e2, queen g4. You just go to a move a, a square like um, h7, and he would promote with check, so we don't have time. No, my idea doesn't work. My idea was after e2, maybe king g1. And going to like f2, but queen f1, and he forces a promotion. So, yeah, he's done incredibly well to manufacture a win here. And although his structure is ruined on the king side, the queen can't do enough by herself. Like, the queen is obviously the most powerful piece, but by herself, she isn't really strong enough. Yeah, and this is also just a way to win it. This also works. Yeah, I, I don't have anything. I don't have anything, because after we give him a check, he can just run to any of these three squares, and we have no follow-up. So that's really annoying. That's really annoying. I feel like I played that. Fairly well, but like, it just wasn't enough in the end game. I wonder whether I had a chance to draw that or not. Because, like, we had the better structure, but he just had a passed pawn, and at the end of the day, that was enough. I know my A pawn was passed, but it was way too far away. So, frustrating, but let's get into the game analysis. Let's see where. I went wrong here. If you want to stick around for the analysis, I think it would be very useful. But if you're just here for the gameplay itself, then thank you for watching. And you can check the playlist below for the previous episodes of the Rapid Rating Climb. So, yeah, I would encourage you to stick around for the analysis, though. And let's get into it. Wow, that was an incredibly high accuracy game. I had 85%, but my opponent had 92.3%. So... Fair play to him. It looked like it was a very level game up until I made a very big mistake. So we'll see that where that was. The opening 
After a3, you want to see e6 or knight c6, so you can go for this gambit. And I have a whole playlist dedicated to um, my games in this a3 Sicilian. So again, that playlist will be linked below if you want to learn more about that. But my opponent goes d6. It's a principled move. It's not the best, but it's fine. We go for this idea of dropping the bishop back to a2. So if d5 is played, then my idea was to go e5. And after something like knight fd7, probably f4 to secure the e5 pawn. And although black is objectively a little bit better, I'm very like familiar with these types of structures. So I was ready for this. Instead, my opponent just continues developing. I was expecting something like d5, but again, I'm going to go for this idea. And I'm very comfortable in this, although the computer thinks it's the best. Knight f3, queen c7, castle, castle. And here I go knight e2, which isn't necessarily the best move, but it's it's fine. I want to make room for c3. I'm basically giving up on my control of the light squares because if d5 is played, then I'm just going to go e5. And then I can go c3. I can maybe go d4, potentially move the king over. I can maybe go like knight g3 and go for f5. And this is good for white. So black doesn't let me do it. He starts expanding on the queen side. I go knight g3 because if I play a move like c3, then c4 I think is an issue. Maybe not in this exact position, but I think it is a problem. Because if I take bc4, if you take then knight takes e4. Queen b6 first is apparently a bit better. Oh, I guess because now you're threatening knight f7. And black's probably going to play d5. He's going to take a lot of space. And the f4 pawn looks a bit silly without an e pawn with it. So go knight g3. Bishop b7 is an inaccuracy. And I go f5, which is a bit premature. But apparently d5 was the move here. Really? Okay, I'm going to let the computer think a second. Because it's slowly changing its mind and it's liking ideas like knight g5 and fe6. Like this. This looks difficult for black to hold, in my opinion. We go z5. We go c3. The computer liked bishop g5 and we go for it here. There's no other obvious plan, really. Knight b8 is actually one of the best moves in this position. Which is kind of crazy. The computer also like c4? No, it changes its mind. I don't know why it even suggested that. Knight b8, queen e2. I should have taken here first. And then just gone bishop d5. And if my opponent trades, then c4 glues the pawn in. So my opponent should go c4. And then knight e4 targeting the bishop, bishop e7. Well, then we get f6. So knight d7 defending the bishop. And then knight fd2 in white is better. Wow, very interesting. I go queen e2 though, which made a lot of sense to me. Knight bd7, rook fe1, and here was my mistake. Knight h5. Targeting the knight, and if you take, then you lose. Because I win in exchange. So black can go h6. Knight f6. Bishop f6. And bishop e3. Okay, I don't know about that. Rook fe1, h6, bishop h4, knight b6, which is a mistake. Because of bishop f6, bishop f6, knight h5. If the bishop retreats, then f6 is winning. Which was my idea in the game. So black needs to find knight d7 to defend the bishop. And then we just play chess. Knight b6, I go rook ad1, c4. King h1 is a mistake. d4 is better. No, it's not. The computer keeps changing its mind on me. This position is so difficult. If um, dc4, knight c4, bishop c4, pawn c4, bishop f6, bishop f6, knight h5, 
The computer likes my initial idea, but the difference is, I, instead of playing king h1 and allowing rook e8, that isn't on the board. So if my opponent tries d5 like he did in the game, then knight f6, gf6, knight d2, the difference is the rook isn't on e8 and the computer likes it for white. Okay, well king h1, we get a similar position in the game after a bit of a longer drawn out sequence. But here, I can immediately go for this. Knight h5. The difference is I haven't taken this knight. Because my initial thought was, okay, I need one of these dark squares to target h6, but I actually don't. If queen e7, bishop c4, bc4, knight f6, queen f6. And now I'm slightly better. Because d5 is very hard to play. Okay, rook dd1 is a miss. And also g6 is the best move here. Which is insane. No one plays uh, g6. Rook f8. We find this idea. Knight h5. d5, which is a great move from black. It's the only real move to not lose here. Which... Well done to him for finding. That's a really good move. And it's what I would expect from a 2100, to be fair. Because if black does something like queen e7 to defend the bishop, let's say, then I just win c4. If the bishop moves to e7, then f6. And the difference is the f file is open, and I also have access to f5 with the knight. And you lose. So d5, great move. Knight f6, gf6. I should have taken on d5. If rook d5, rook d5, bishop d5, then I go knight d2. Or h3. Again, the computer keeps changing its mind. If knight d2, let's say rook d8. Knight f1? Okay, queen b7. Knight e3. And then you lose c4. Okay, well, we went for it like this. Knight d2, king h7, ed5, bishop d5, knight e4 is the mistake. So knight e4 is where I went, where I went wrong. I should have gone knight f1, and then maybe put the knight on g3 to get into like h5. Target f6. Knight f1, rook g8. Knight e3, or we're going after c4 even. Queen c6. This is really weird. h3. And white is just way better somehow. Rook d7. King h2. Let's say rook gd8. Then I infiltrate like this. King g7, knight g4. Oh, we just beat black on the dark squares. That's the whole idea. Wow, so I should have just kept the knight on the board. Instead, I let black trade. And rook d8. And it's still drawing. It's still drawing. Queen d3. Queen b7 is the mistake. Queen h4 is the only move. Target f6. And if king g7, then queen g4. Oh, and we just repeat. Because the king has to step off of the defense. And if you defend with the queen, then I win c4 and I'm winning. Crazy. But I just missed it. Queen b7, king g7. And queen a6 is the mistake. Like the big losing mistake. Apparently I can still try and survive with queen b6. And if e4. Queen f2, e3. Queen g3, king h7. And queen c7. And I get the... Rep Basically, I get a repetition. Because if king g7, queen g3, and something like king f8, then I just give checks. So I was right to try and use that diagonal. I was just a little bit too late. I was just too late. I went after the a pawn, and I lost that crucial tempo. e4, and here I'm just losing. Um, Yeah, there's literally just nothing I can do. He promotes. And doing this does absolutely nothing. Because I have no follow-up check. 
And the best I can do is just give up my queen because I'm about to get mated on g1 or h1. So, yeah, unfortunately, lose the game. But it was a very interesting game. I held my own against like a 2160 for a good like 30 moves. I even had the advantage. I found the right ideas in the position, which I was very happy about. But I just let it slip in the end game in low time, which seems to be a common theme, not only for me, but for many of my opponents. Check out the previous video if you don't know what I'm on about. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.